In order to create your tessellation, you'll need the following items. You'll need a piece of copy paper, eight and a half by 11 inches. You'll need a piece of cardstock. Yours will probably be white. I'm using pink today, so it shows up on the white background. And it will be two and a half by two and a half inches. As an optional thing, I've also used post-it notes that are squares. And what's nice is, is they have a sticky part on the back that will hold your paper in place while you trace around it, but not necessary for this because you will be provided with paper from your classroom teachers. And you'll also need a pencil, a pair of scissors, some tape, and you'll also need to have something to color with. You could use crayons, colored pencils, markers, or a combination of them. And of course, you'll need your imagination. All right, let's get started. All right, before we get started, I wanna give you just a little bit of additional information. The most famous artist that created Tessellations was MC Escher. And if you go on my YouTube page and you look around for another video on Tessellations, there will be um, a PowerPoint slide presentation that will be set to music that you are welcome to look at to learn a little bit more about MC Escher and his artwork. And I also wanna let you know that when I think of tessellations, I usually think of puzzles where the pieces are made of all these same identical shape, but when you put them together, they fit like pieces of a puzzle will. There are three types of tessellations that most people do. One is called the translation or slide, and that means once you've made your puzzle piece, you'll slide it over either to the left or right or up and down, and they should fit together. Another one is the rotational. That is going to be when you're going to rotate it in order to make the pieces fit. And there is also one known as reflection. The reflection is where you have to flip the piece over in order to make all the pieces fit. Today, we're gonna to be doing the translation, which is the easiest one. In my other video on my YouTube channel, it shows how you can cut one side and tape it to the opposite side in order to make your art. I'll show you how to do that, but then I'm also going to invite a super secret challenge. If you wanna to try to do in another side and do that on the other side of the paper, you'll see exactly what I mean when I show you how to do it but you're welcome to do that extra additional step, especially if you're in an older grade. All right, so to get going, I need to make a shape and there are some rules that you should and shouldn't do. The first rule is, is when you draw out a shape on one side, I'm gonna choose the bottom side for this. You do not wanna do shapes that have curly cues in the middle, things like this. This is not a shape that we can cut out easily and then tape to the opposite side of our paper. Sometimes kids ask me if they can do multiple shapes, like could I do a triangle? Could I do a half circle? And yes, you can do that. That is fine. These are simple shapes that have no interior shapes. So you can cut these out and tape them to the other side to make your piece that will tessellate. The other thing that kids always ask me is if they can create a shape that goes to the opposite side of the paper. For this lesson, we're going to say no. And doing shapes that might begin on one side and then go over to the other, you could do that. That would be okay. If you want an extra challenge, you can do that. For beginning uh, tessellations, probably best to keep the shapes on one side and then tape to the other side. You could go ahead and do another shape on this side too. And then again, we're gonna take that shape and tape it to the other side as well. I'll show you what that looks like. I'll also show you how this looks like and I'll also show you how you could do an interesting shape with curves and edges and points and do that one as well. So let me go ahead and show you that now. I'll cut those out. Let me just stop for a moment and say something about how I've cut it out. So I've cut out this shape, but oh no, 
I didn't cut out this little part right here. Maybe I should just go ahead and cut that out so it's the way it's supposed to be. No, do not do that. That is what you should not do. We want to have the exact same shape that we've cut out from the bottom when we tape it up to the top. Do not try to cut this better because are you going to be taking that little sliver and taping it to the top of this? Probably not if it's a really small piece. So don't do it, but look, I can flip this over and you don't even know that I made a mistake on the other side. So that's how I would handle that situation. Let me go ahead and cut out those other ones now so you can see how those would look. What's interesting with this shape is I could have gone either direction. I can either go up and then tape that down or I could go across and tape that down. It's really going to be which way you want because you've cut out an entire corner. I think I like it here better. Then kids like to ask me, can I go and cut another shape and go over here? Well, you have to be careful because if you were to cut out a shape right here and then try to tape it down, uh, I can't do that. But I could maybe cut out a shape here and I could probably move that up if I wanted to. So you could do more, but just for this first tessellation, since we're getting to learn how to do it, probably best to keep it simple. Here's one that I've gone ahead and I did cut out a tiny bottom portion here that I could slide to the top. And what I will want to do, since I have two shapes that are the same or close to the same size, I am gonna mark a little X on each of those and maybe even this one too, since I have multiple ones. And this will let me know that, and then, you know, you could also put a little X on this too, just very lightly that you can go back and erase la later. But when I cut out these pieces, I'm, I'm a little worried that I might flip one over and turn, put, tape it the wrong way and then it won't fit right. But if I've marked these, I know that when I cut them out, I'm not gonna accidentally flip it over when I go to tape it on the other side, it'll be turned the right way. Now you're gonna see why I did that. So I didn't want to accidentally flip this one over because it is close to the right shape, but not quite right. So when I go to tape this, I wouldn't want to tape this here. I want to make sure that this is on top when I go to slide it over. And you really want to try to line it up so it's as even as possible. That means when I'm looking at this shape here, I want to have the same distance here as I do right here before I will tape it down to the other side. The next problem that sometimes kids will have is um, when you go to tape it down, um, kids will want to overlap it sometimes. So don't let it overlap your piece. You wanna make sure that it is exactly flush and even as close as possible with the um, larger piece that you cut it out from. And you know, if the tape winds up being too big, you can always go back and trim the tape off. Um, but I'm gonna put a piece of tape now that will go over this. Now, um, I will say this, if you're using really shiny tape, it is, it is almost impossible to draw over it with a pencil. So more than likely, you'll wanna flip it over and this will be the side that you're gonna draw or put additional details on. That'll be our next step. Let me go ahead and tape down all the rest of these pieces though. Now I'm going to go ahead and trim off any tape that might cover up my holes. And I will do this with each one. All right, to get started um, with the tracing portion of this, I am going to go ahead and find a corner that on the original one that I might still have. That might be easier. Sometimes kids like to fold down the taped portion, and then you can line that up with the top of your paper, 
and you're gonna try to match it into that corner as nice as possible. So if I had left this up, I could see that this corner would line up just like so. So we wanna kinda get it started off um, so that we have the lines and shapes that will be nice and straight. So we'll be tracing this going across and we'll also be tracing it going top and bottom. I'll go ahead and do that now. Now for the moment of truth, we're gonna go ahead and line up the one underneath it and see if it all matches up. And it is pretty doggone close. I do have a thin sliver of white here, but I think I can kind of make sure if I move it just a little bit, I think it'll be just gonna be just perfect. All right, I think that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and trace the rest of this out. You may have noticed that when I traced here on the right hand side, it went off the edge of the paper. That is A-OK -okay to do. And we're actually gonna do something like that down here. You're just gonna be able to fit in as much as you can and then just draw what you can. You probably won't be able to fit a whole nother row with a complete one on this size paper. And now it's all traced out. What I'm gonna do next is I'm just going to draw out a few of the other examples that I have made just to show you what that looks like. Let me also say that if for some reason while you're tracing it, you notice that maybe you accidentally taped it down, flipped over, or it's not really lining up very good, it's super easy because they're just barely uh, attached here to take a pair of scissors and cut through that tape that's there. Sometimes you can just tear it with your fingers too or gently peel it off. Um, and then retape it so that it is where it's supposed to be on your artwork. Mine was fine, but if that happens to you, don't feel shy about fixing it before you start doing a lot of tracings. We wanna get that right, so it'll be easier and more fun for you to do as you trace it. All right, so we need to talk for just a moment about what we're gonna do with our tessellation. So what I would recommend you do is use a transfer method to transfer your design and lines to your paper so that they are all identical and in the same place. Now, some people like to do two different designs and have them alternate. So if you wanted to do that and you want your lines to be all identical and match up, you might need to have a second one of these so that you can do that. 
But for beginners, I highly recommend that you just do one design. And if you want to have an alternating pattern, do it with the colors that you have. And I'll show you what I mean. The next part is probably the hardest part for kids too, is because you want to try to transform this into a picture. So you might need to look at it from different points of view. Trying to see, is there something here that this looks like? Could this be part of an elephant head here? And this could be part of its body and then there's another elephant head. Or maybe turning it a different direction like this and seeing maybe something else that might possibly be there. Um, sometimes it helps me to squint my eyes and just look at the shape or even close one eye and look at the shape and see if something really pops out to you. Um, like maybe this could be a Santa's beard and we could have a face here and maybe there's a little hat or something. Maybe this way it looks like an eagle's head and these could be part of its wings and body coming out. Or this way it could be part of an ice cream cone or a lady's head. And that means depending upon which way you wanna make your picture, you might have to turn your paper a different direction for that. So that is A-OK -okay if you wanted to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and go maybe with the elephant. I think that's a kind of interesting idea. I wanna explore that. And um, I recommend, as always, draw light until you get it right, because you might change your mind and you may wanna try to do the eagle instead. That would work out great also. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to add lines to my picture to try to make it look like what I wanted it to look like. So maybe I'll have the elephant ear here and I'll have an eye and maybe there'll be an inside to that ear. Maybe down here would be part of the tusk or mouth. Maybe I'll go ahead and add a line that looks like this for its nose. And then I probably will only have this part because it's gonna be overlapping other elephants that are there. So it'll be a whole herd of elephants when I'm done. All right, so next what I'm going to do is I wanna transfer these lines so they're identical. I'm gonna flip my paper over on the back side, and I'm gonna use a pencil and I'm gonna press super hard now. All along the back. And you may have to stop and do this again once or twice before you're all done, should your lines look super, super light. But I'm pressing real hard. I wanna make sure I get all those spaces just right on here. And then I'm gonna show you what you can do with your finger. And because it can help to smooth out any uh, lead or graphite that is from your pencil to fill in any little gaps that you may have missed while you were doing this part here. Okay, now I'm gonna just take my finger and rub it. And with a little luck, it'll just fill in all those little spaces I wasn't able to get. And sometimes if your color is starting to get light on your paper as you transfer it, you can come back and do this a couple of times, but then you might need to come back and use your pencil to um, go ahead and redo that one more time. All right, so now I am going to take this line it up back into my translation that slid across and I'm going to press nice and hard with my pencil. Trying to just match up and retrace those lines as best as I can. Which is why I highly recommend you pick something that you're gonna love to do over and over again. So this is what I had, so now I'm gonna lift it up and you can see that the lines are now there. So now I can go in 
and I can just make these lines just a little bit more. Now I'm looking here, I saw that there was um, a line there and I don't know, I, I might decide I wanna keep that line there just to separate the ear. So I'm gonna just put that line right in there like that. And these won't be 100% identical because there's something that's handmade and things that are handmade will oftentimes have slight uh, uh, deviations from the original. And that's what makes art so special and unique is because it's those little deviations that let people know that a lot of time was invested in making some beautiful art. We're gonna go with that and love our pictures. All right, I'm just gonna go through and fill in all those lines for us. My graphite is getting light as I transfer it, so I'm gonna re-rub it to fill in those little gaps and hopefully it'll be darker when I start tracing it again. So now I'm just gonna go back and retrace my lines so that they're darker and easier for me to see. All right, now for this one, um, because they're all identical, I am actually going to make a pattern where every other one will be a different color, keeping in that checkerboard pattern design. I will need to choose two colors to do that, and uh, I happen to really like purple and blue, so I am gonna use these two. And you can watch and see how I do that. Now, just because I made this elephant in the pattern all the same color, doesn't mean I have to do all the same colors for each elephant in the other pattern. I could change up colors, but the point is, is we wanna keep the pattern going. So for example, if I gave this one green ears, then I would want to give that one in that pattern the green ears in each one of these but do I need to make the whole body green? No, I could decide I wanted to make the body on that one orange or magenta or whatever color I was interested in doing that. So the point is, is that whatever pattern you do, you do need to stick with it. So for these alternating turquoise ones, I just made them all red, but for these alternating purple outlined ones, I am making the ears all the same color as green. So I'm just gonna finish this one up. And if I missed any, I'll come back and hit them with some more color. Uh, and now let's say I wanted to have maybe, um, I said I was interested in maybe doing, uh, hey, I got a dark purple outline, but I think I wanna do a purple body too. And you could do these with markers or colored pencils. Any of those would be just fine. And I've decided I'm gonna make the head purple too. So it'll be a purple elephant with green ears. You could use colored pencils and really get some nice shading in here if you wanted to. Now, if I wanted to do two different ones, I could take another piece of paper the same size I'm gonna use this to trace it.
make my new piece. draw my new design on it. And since I had to turn it around, there will be an upside down one, depending upon how you look at the picture. So I would go ahead and I would color all of this on the back. And then I would go ahead and trace them. The uh, only disadvantage to using a sticky note in this process is that sometimes with repeated tracings, it may tear the paper a little bit because you're pressing hard for so long. So keep that in mind. Um, that is a limitation with that particular material, which makes the cardstock more superior in that sense. And now for the uh, alternating pattern, that means if I have an elephant here and an eagle here, below the elephant, next to the elephant, and above the elephant will all be the bird to make the pattern. We're going for a checkerboard or chest board style for our um, alternating pattern. So that's what we are going for. And I'll show you what that looks like right now.
All right, so now that's done. I am going to say, hey, if you want to use colored pencils, you can. You could use markers to outline it and then color it in with the same or different colors. That's going to be up to you. This one, because it has two different pictures, whatever I did for the eagle, I would probably make those eagle colors all the same. And that means if this was a brown eagle, that meant that uh, this eagle is brown with a white head, and this eagle is brown with a white head, and that eagle is brown with a white head. Um, and the elephant, if I make a gray elephant, it's all gray. But because this is your artwork, if you want to have fun and make your elephants maybe pink elephants or polka dotted elephants, you're certainly able to do that. All right, here's my two finished examples. I can't wait to see yours.